Hello, and welcome to Opening Bars. One bass drum thud, a couple of hi-hat taps, and one snare drum smack is all you need to hear to instantly know that you're listening to Billie Jean. It is one of the most iconic drum set sounds and bassline riffs ever created. The audio engineer, Bruce Swedian, was asked to create a unique sonic personality, which he most certainly did. As he later explained, what I ended up doing was building a drum platform and designing some special little things like a bass drum cover and a flat piece of wood that goes between the snare and the hi-hat. The bass line is no less recognizable, played by Lewis Johnson on his Yamaha bass. It's a distinctive one-bar, minimalistic ostinato pattern, with the tonic F-sharp doubled by a distorted synthesized bass with each repetition on beats one and the and of two. As an interesting side note, and according to Daryl Hall of Hall & Oates, Michael approached him during the recording of We Are the World and admitted to lifting the bass line to Billie Jean from I Can't Go For That. Daryl replied that he himself had lifted it, and that was something that all artists do. Let's take a look at this groundbreaking piece. Here we will be using the treble clef for the right hand and a bass clef with a small eight underneath for the left hand to indicate that the notes are to be played down the octave. There are three sharps, so we are either in A major or F sharp minor. I'm sure you know this piece, and as the F sharp is prevalent as a pseudo pedal tone and the first triad is F sharp minor, we can safely assume the minor here. Taking our cue from the persistent repeating motif in the bass line, or ostinato as it's called, these opening bars are all on the tonic. The right hand, moving from the F sharp minor triad to G sharp minor over F sharp to A major over F sharp and back to the G sharp minor over the F sharp. They all seem to be passing chords to me, moving away and back to the tonic. The functional harmony doesn't move for me. That's why I've indicated just a small letter I for the tonic in the minor all the way. Now, some have suggested that this piece is in the Dorian mode, and if you look at those right hand chords, and more specifically, at that prominent D sharp within the G sharp minor triad, it might seem so. If you add up all of the notes from these triads to create a scale, you will in fact get that distinctive Dorian mode with the raised sixth degree, in this instance starting on the F sharp. And we hear that D sharp later in a synth brass part, which is in keeping with the right hand chord movement. I have no quarrel with that. However, later in the verse, we also hear a solid B minor harmony with its enclosed D natural. A clear 1-4-1 one, one movement. And in the bridge between verses, we get an insistent D major chord alternating with the tonic F sharp minor. In addition, Michael sings a D natural on Be Careful What and on the word My on his way down to the end of the verse. The kid is not my son. So there really is no foundational harmony to tie this here to the Dorian mode itself, in my opinion. I would stand by my assertion that the underlying harmony is based on the natural F sharp minor scale, also called the Aeolian mode and that those right-hand chords in the introduction and beyond are, as I indicated, just passing chords following the Dorian scale. Let's take a look at the rhythm then. There's nothing here that is substantially different from our previous page, but I've notated the movement to the subdominant B minor during the verse, with its slight deviation from the straight eighths in the left hand, having the briefest of pauses right on beat three. I've included the octave doubling heard on the album to highlight the emphasized rhythm on beat one and the end of two. Let's just play that as written now, as evenly as possible, making sure we deliver a consistent attack and release of the notes, particularly in the chords in the right hand. Here we go. I doubt that a keyboard player would be expected to play that octave doubling, 
unless they were using two hands on the bass line alone, but I've included it to give you some pause and consider its performance practicality. You'll find this very difficult as it results in an awkward shifting of your left hand. Nonetheless, it's something that you should consider examining your hand positions to provide the most amount of comfort, the most accuracy, and the least tension for the size of your own hands. One thing you might consider doing is turning your performance piece into an opportunity to devise your own keyboard exercises. This is a great example where you can practice chord inversions in a progression while maintaining your ostinato bass in the left hand. This is far, far trickier than it seems. Practice slowly and deliberately before bringing up to speed. I hope you enjoyed your lesson today. Remember, don't just play notes. Make music. Until next time, thanks for listening.